arriving, Julia. I was just coming to see you. Another emergency? Of the most urgent nature. Um, what are you doing Sunday night? Mm, I don't plan my emergencies that far in advance, Mr. Cameron. I have here two tickets to the employee's dinner dance, and my emergency is that I don't have a date. Have you tried the yellow pages? <laughs> what do I have to do to get a date with you, Mrs. Baker? You might try a very direct approach. Very well. May I have the honor of your company to the Astro Space Employees Dinner Dance? No, sorry. Well, maybe I'd better try a very sneaky approach. It won't help, Paul. I've already accepted an invitation. Ted Newman again? Ted Newman again. The only thing that keeps me from tearing that man in half is that I don't want two of them around here. I don't blame you. Just one Ted Newman is too much competition for you. Hi. What happened to you, Eddie? It was terrible. Worst accident I ever had. Oh, I can't talk about it. More, Hannah. More. You've got enough bandage on it now to feed ten generations of moths. Oh, the pain, Julia. The agony. The torture. You didn't even bruise it. I'm talking about the way you treat me. Here I break my best finger. She acts like it's nothing. It is nothing. I'm wrapping it like this to keep you from sucking your thumb, you big baby. Just for that, I withdraw my offer. I've already refused. The offer is withdrawn retroactively before you refuse. <laughs> Unless you change your mind. Eddie, he's too cute for words. Not for the words I know. What nerve. He wants to take me to the company's dinner dance. I think that's very sweet of him. Sweet? If any man invites me to a formal affair, the least he can do is buy the tickets. He doesn't expect you to buy your own. Oh, he was generous about it. He said he has two tickets, and he'll let me have one for half price. No. <laughs> If I don't get a better offer than that, I'll stay home and watch the Basil Rathbone Film Festival on Channel 16. I just had a better offer myself from a certain gentleman in insurance. Well, I thought you were going to go with that dreamy Ted Newman. I am. Maybe you could go with Paul. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm old enough to be his mother. Maybe he'll take you to dinner next Mother's Day. Oh! <laughs> Well, auditioning for the Olympic towel tossing team, are we, ladies? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. You're right, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Baker, Mrs. Chegley is going to San Diego to the flower show. She's given me permission to ask a trusted associate to the dinner dance on the 23rd. Would you care to go? Oh, I'm flattered, Doctor. Flattery is not my intent. I'm stuck with two tickets. It's difficult to resist such a charming invitation, <laughs> but I've already accepted an even more charming one. Ah, uh, you have a date. I have, yes. But Hannah hasn't. Oh, that's not news. She is a trusted associate, I doctor. would just as well stay at home and watch the Basil Rathbone Film Festival on Channel 6. Channel 16. It's on both. Basil Rathbone is very big with the Medicare set. You and Hannah, you have so much in common. Now, she's going to stay home and watch Basil Rathbone, too. Well, I... I don't know. Do you think she'd accept my invitation? I have a feeling, if you ask her, she might give up one night with Basil Rathbone for an evening with Dr. Morton Chegley. Hmm. Well, it may not be a bad idea. I'm on a diet, and Yarby's company is certainly an appetite depressant. Oh, Doc. Hannah, doctor has something to say to you. Yes. I'm all ears, doctor. Oh, I wish I had an answer to that that I could say to your face. No, no, wait. What would you say if I were to ask you to come to the dinner dance with me? Let's both find out when you ask. All right, then I'm asking. I'm accepting. I'm enjoying. And I'm insisting. But, Ted, you... No, I will not double date again with any other couple, and especially Dr. Chegley and Nurse Yarby. Please, Ted. No, 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 no! Pretty please with sugar on it. 
absolutely not with mustard and horseradish on it. But no buts, ifs, ands, wherefores, or howsoevers. I am not going to spend an evening refereeing a long, plain argument between your boss and Hannah. Corey, will you see who that is, please? I can't. Why can't you? Because the door's closed. Open it. Who's this? Hi, Corey. How are you doing? I'm busy. Who is it, Corey? It's your unreasonable date for the evening. Hey, I'll be out in a minute. Take your time. I want to check out the activity in this room. What's going on, man? We're drinking milk. With the tubes Mr. Cooper gave us. Yeah, the milk station, the refrigerator, and keeps cool. Who figured that out? Earl J. Wagadon. Yeah, when I grow up, I'm going to be an inventor. That's good dreaming. And what about Corey? What are you going to be? I don't know yet. Roll J. Wagadorn's gonna invent a new job for me. He probably will. New jobs are being invented every day. But hadn't you guys better get ready to go downstairs to your house, Earl? How'd you know Corey was gonna spend the night with me? My mom told him everything. Uh, not quite everything, Corey. Mr. Newman? Yes? Are you going to marry Mrs. Baker? <laughs> uh, why do you ask? Because I don't want you to. Why not? Because when I grow up, I want to marry you. <laughs> you can't marry my mother, O.J. Wagadorn. Why can't I? Because I don't want my next father to be a inventor. That's why. Oh. What do you want your next father to be, Corey? Either the President of the United States or a milkman. <laughs> promise now, Corey. You won't give the Wagadorns any trouble and you go to sleep promptly when they tell you. I promise to go to bed, but I don't know if I can go to sleep. I'm thirsty. We'll have a glass of water. Good idea. I have to run now. Mr. Newman's waiting. See you. Good night, Ma. I'll see you in the morning. Your mom's sure pretty, Corey. I don't care, old J. Wagadorn. You still can't marry her when you grow up. What took so long? Sorry, I had to referee a family dispute between Lenny and Marie again. Supreme Court Justice Baker warming up for an evening on the bench. What does that mean? That means that Dr. Chegley and Hannah Yarby are going to be at the dinner, and you'll spend the entire night keeping them from each other's throat. Oh, Ted, you are so pessimistic. In the first place, we don't even have to sit together, and in the second place... place Paul Cameron will try to cut in on every dance, and you'll wind up refereeing a fight. My, my. Two men haven't fought over me since I was in the sixth grade. And you know what? What? I stopped them, made them shake hands. Then both of them stole my lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, do you really want to squander a beautiful night like this on a dull, boring company dinner? Oh, I fancy there are more imaginative ways to spend an evening. Well, fasten your safety belt. She wasn't going to bring me any more water either. If my dad won't bring me any water, and my mother won't bring you any water, I'll 
guess we'll have to get it ourselves. Yeah, let's. I know a good idea. What? <laughs> from Marie. About what? Nothing. Nothing important. She says that Corey drinks too much water. <laughs> and for that, she slips a note into your door? Well, read the P.S. P.S. Corey drinks too much water. See? Aha! Paul Cameron called. Call him as soon as you get home. Olympic 563. He is not cutting in on my date. You promised me scrambled eggs, so start scrambling. Let me go change. Okay. I wonder what Cameron was calling you about. He's probably angry because we didn't show up at the dinner dance. Which, come to think of it, Ted Newman, was a pretty sneaky maneuver on your part. What do you mean, maneuver? You outfoxed him, so he couldn't cut in on you. And so you didn't have to make good your threat to beat him up. I can't stand violence. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm changing, can you be violent enough to break a few eggs into a bowl? <laughs> with my bare hands. Mm. <laughs> uh, shall I? No, let me. It might be the phone. Who'd be calling to this hour? Hello? Julia. It's about time you got home. I've been calling since midnight. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't your neighbor leave a note for you to call me? I just came in a while ago. Well, I've been home all night, suffering, Julia. Can you come over? No, certainly not. And don't you come over here, either. How could I? I told you I'm sick, Julia. Very sick. You didn't tell me that. I said I'm suffering. I turn to you, an angel of mercy in my hour of need. It's my hour of rest. If you're really ill, call a doctor. I don't trust doctors. I don't trust you. If that's Cameron, let me. How can you turn down a fellow human being who appeals to you for help? Now, even, even if you weren't a nurse, as a woman, as an American... Stop waving all the flags. You don't even sound sick. As a nurse, I told you to call a doctor. As a woman, I would you even if you were in traction and as an american i'm not about to hand out any foreign aid in your direction and besides all that paul cameron my eggs are burning nighty night paulie baby <laughs> well you know i have danced so much since i took first place in the lindy hop contest down at the arrogant ballroom back in 38. of course i was younger then and my feet could take it better <laughs> Hi, Hannah, you're late. I knew I'd run into you today, Eddie. This morning, I broke a mirror. What's the matter, Hannah? Oh, him and his Lindy Hop. Tossing me around like a rubber doll. At his age. We won second prize, didn't we? Ha! Congratulations! Who won first prize? Oh, they didn't give one. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Majinski. Hi, Doc. I was just telling Julia what a great dance she missed last night. Yes, Baker, you can expect about 50 cases of sore feet in here today. And one sprained back, Hannah's. Well, it's not her back, it's her knee. Serves her right doing the Lindy Hop at her age. Yeah, my garter snapped and the buckle hit her knee. What happened to you last night? At the last minute, we decided to go to the beach instead. Oh. Hey, I do a great sand dance, too. Want to see it? No. Just get out of here, Edson. When you do, take that over to the pharmacy, have them fill it, and deliver it to Paul Cameron's apartment. Go. Paul Cameron? Call me in the middle of the night last night, sick as a dog. Come in. It's open. 
Julia. Hello, Paul. How are you? Well, a little better now, unless I'm dreaming this. With your eyes wide open? <laughs> Please forgive me for last night. I had no business acting the way I did. I really thought you were just trying Forget to... Forget it. It's my fault, too. I guess I've overplayed my hand so often that maybe we could just start out fresh. I'm willing. How do you do, Mr. Cameron? I'm Julia Baker. My pleasure, Mrs. Baker. Uh, forgive me for not rising. I understand. It's my lunch hour, so I thought I'd drop in to see if there's anything I could do for you. What? Is it noon already? I guess I must have dozed off. I better take my medicine. I... Oh. Could you get it for me, please? I'm still wobbly. Of I... course. You stay it... right where you are. It's over there, on ice. It has to be kept chilled. Uh, two tablespoons and a glass of cold water. Every hour, so it said. Oh, you'll find a jug of water in the reefer. <laughs> the ice box, that's Navy slang. Oh, no wonder you and Dr. Chegley get along so well. He was Navy, too. No, I was a Marine. No wonder you and Dr. Chegley don't get along so well. <laughs> Uh, maybe I better get an alarm that works to remind me every hour. Unless you'll call me. Why don't I just take your old one out and have it fixed? Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you just take my old one out and have it fixed? And meanwhile, come by every hour and give me my medicine. Here. Salute. Prosit. Lachheim. Mud in your eye. Ah. Uh, 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 now, Paul Cameron, <laughs> we on. mustn't overexert ourselves. <laughs> Come in. Julia, what a surprise. Yes, Ted, what are you... I uh, figured I'd bring a sick brother something to read. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Ted. But that's for later. He's still very weak. Uh, yes, thank you, nurse. I'm... Oh, I, I, I better rest now. Yes. Lots of rest. You need lots of rest. Mm -hmm. Come on, Ted. I'll see you, Paul. Oh. Goodbye, Paul. Bye. If that guy's sick, I'm a monkey's uncle. Well, toss your nephew a peanut, Uncle Teddy, because Cameron's taking the turn for the worse. He's so weak, he can't get out of bed to take his medicine. Who told you that? He's called twice in the past half hour, begging Julia to come by. Well, why don't you go up, nurse? He's not going to make a pass at you. That's one reason I won't go. The other is that it's my evening to work in doctor's clinics. Bummy and all. Besides, it's the second night of the Basil Rathbone Film Festival. In that case, I'll do the handsome thing. What handsome thing? I'll go up and see to it that Cameron gets his medicine. Are you sure you want to? No. But while I'm doing it anyway, why don't you run home and see if you can scramble some eggs for me without burning them? <laughs> if that's a challenge, mister, you are on. <laughs> For these two splendid young citizens, I might never have solved the problem of getting Paul Cameron's medicine to him every hour on the hour. Again. No, the bacon! 